All right. Let me go on here. There is a, a piece in the Wall Street Journal that is almost out of uh, Monty Python. Imagine you're an ambitious Italian entrepreneur. This gives you an idea of how difficult it is to do business in Italy. Imagine you're an ambitious Italian entrepreneur trying to make a go of a new business. You know you'll have to pay at least two-thirds of your employees' social security costs. You hear that? Try to keep these obstacles in mind. You also know you're going to run into problems once you hire your 16th employee, since that will trigger provisions making it either impossible or very expensive to dismiss a staffer. But there's so much more. Once you hire employee 11... You must submit, listen to this, It's you couldn't make this up. You must submit an annual self-assessment to the national authorities outlining every possible health and safety hazard to which your employees might be subject. These include work-related stress and stress caused by age, gender, and racial differences. You must also note all precautionary and individual measures to prevent risks, procedures to carry them out, the names of employees in charge of safety, as well as the name of the physician whose presence is required for the assessment. And I've only just begun. You want to know why they're not productive in much of Italy and Europe and why they're in such debt? We'll continue. Hello, everybody. You're listening to the Dennis Prager Show. I want to just read to you a little more here about what it takes to employ somebody in Italy. All right, here we go. Once you hire your 16th employee, national unions can set up shop, and workers may elect their own separate representatives. As your company grows, so does the number of required employee representatives each of whom is entitled to eight hours of paid leave monthly to fulfill union or works council duties. Management must consult these worker reps on everything from gender equality to the introduction of new technology. Higher number 16 also means that your next recruit, mo- listen to this one, higher number 16, so once you've hired your 16th worker, means your 17th worker must qualify as disabled. By the time your firm hires its 51st worker, 7% of the payroll must be handicapped in some way, or else your company is fined. During hard times, your company may apply for exemption from these quotas, though as with everything in Italy, it's a toss-up whether it's even worth it after the necessary paperwork. Once you hire your 101st employee, you must submit a report every two years on the gender dynamics within the company. This must include a tabulation of the men and women employed in each production unit, their functions and level within the company, details of their compensation and benefits, and dates and reasons for recruitments, promotions, and transfers as well as the estimated revenue impact. Finally, all of these protections and assurances, along with the bureaucracies that oversee them, subtract 47.6% from the average Italian wage. Basically half. 